It seems no matter where in this world we live, whether it be the East Coast, the West Coast, in the middle of nowhere, or in cities, unexplainable events are happening to people all over the world. Once again, these people sent in their allegedly true experiences that they claim they cannot explain. Joining me today, reading story number two, is my good friend, the Creepy Fox. If you guys have not heard of the Creepy Fox before, I highly recommend you check out his channel. You can find the link to do so in the description down below. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, be sure to do so by submitting it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find, which is also in the description down below. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going. Now, without further ado, let's get into these creepy, unexplainable stories. So this happened to me today, and I am a little creeped out. I work as a cable installer, and I was working at a guy's house. We'll call him T. T had on some very disgusting clothing. A t-shirt with a nest controller and blue bandana. This will be an important detail. Now, T works directly across the street at a body shop, so he would occasionally run across the street, leaving me alone to do my work. So as I was working, I realized that I needed to go to my van and grab something. I hear T on the phone, with someone, and think nothing of it. As I was walking to the front door, I glanced behind me and saw T coming toward me slowly. I didn't think anything of this, and closed the door behind me as I left. Once I was outside, walking toward the van, I see T running across the street, towards his work. There was no way he had gotten past me. I then thought back a second and realized that T was not wearing the same clothes inside when I had saw him, and he wasn't on the phone. It's kind of weird though, of why he was moving so slowly toward me, and how he would end up outside ahead of me. I hadn't seen his feet move. It was as if whatever that thing was, was gliding toward me. I don't know what that thing was, maybe a skimwalker or a time loop or some kind of ghost, or maybe I'm just going crazy. I didn't see the thing for the remainder of the job, but it still creeps me out to this day. The thing copied T's appearance perfectly, except for his clothes. I'm still not sure what the thing was, but if anyone knows what something like this might be, please let me know. When I was in my early teens, I had a fascination with divination, the occult, and spiritualism. Basically, anything to offer some sort of proof that there's more to this reality than what we believe. This all started in the early 90s when I saw on a Ouija board for sale in our local small town grocery store. Needless to say, I bought it. I couldn't believe they actually sold these as games. Mind you, I lived in a small town and grew up disconnected from a lot of the pop culture staples of that era. I would play with the board often, mostly with my stepbrother Dan and stepsister Holly when they came to visit during the summer months and over the holidays. Both of them were considerably younger than me, me being no older than 13 at the time. The board became an obsession of mine, even though over 95% of the time, nothing would happen, or when it did move, we would receive short nondiscreet messages. Then, on one cold winter day, this was about to change. My siblings and I retreated upstairs in an attempt to play the board. We lit usual candles and killed the lights. After a few attempts to summon a spirit, the planchette started to move. This time, it felt different. It glided with ease around the board and answered simple yes and no questions with great finesse. In disbelief, we took our fingers off the planchette. The moment we did so, the flame on the candle began to shrink dramatically. We quickly placed our fingers back on the planchette and the flame immediately came back to life. We then asked, Where in the room are you? The pointer spelled out K-I-T-E. We sat there confused for a moment until we realized that I had a kite mounted to the ceiling above our heads. At this moment, the kite began to flutter 
as if there was a slight breeze. The thing is, we lived in a log cabin that didn't have central air. There were no fans running either, so this was quite odd. We continued playing, and I decided to ask, We would like to know our spirit guide names. This was a very new age question as I looked back. I then asked, What is my guide's name? The board spelled out A-R-T-H-U-R. Dan asked for the name of his guide, and the board lettered out B-R-E-T. And finally, Holly asked for hers, and the board replied G A. R-E-T-H. We were all kind of shocked with the results and discontinued playing to go downstairs and tell my mother the information we just received. After doing so, she replied with, You know, I don't know. Why don't you look up the names in the dictionary? At the time, I thought this was pretty unhelpful advice, but reluctantly, I did. A dictionary probably isn't the best resource for looking up names, but this was before the internet. So, I grabbed the dictionary off the shelf and began flipping through the pages. Searching the name Brett came up with a few uninteresting results. Next, I looked up Arthur. Not surprisingly, King Arthur along with maybe a few other Arthurs were in the list. I then proceeded to look up Gareth. When I did so, my jaw hit the floor. Gareth was King Arthur's nephew. I was completely dumbfounded. I knew at this moment that the names we received probably weren't the actual names of our spirit guides. These were purposefully crafted by something with the full awareness that we could or would look them up to draw a connection between the two. Now, before you go and assume my stepbrother and or sister pushed the planchette, Keep this in mind, Dan has always had a learning disability. Even today, he still has difficulty spelling and uses voice to text because of it. I'm 100% confident he couldn't have moved it. I'm also 100% confident that neither of them at the time was well versed in the genealogy of Arthurian mythology. I've observed this with a skeptical point of view since the day it happened. This still remains as one of the few times the board actually moved, more or less provided us with legible, specific details. To this day, at the age of 39, I remain convinced that what we received was not from us, but from somewhere else. Something that I believe knew full well that my mother was going to tell me to look it up. I'm not exactly sure how I should categorize my story. I used to have these vivid nightmares when I lived in my childhood home in Rhode Island. What stood out the most about it is, I'd have the same nightmare three to four times within a certain time span. The dreams would take place at my childhood house, the house I lived in at the time. I'd be chased around the whole house by a faceless man. He was short, dark haired, he was built like a man, about 5'9 or taller, and in place of his facial features would be a blackout blur. I didn't find any family members or anyone for that matter in the house. All I know was that my gut feeling was telling me that there was something wrong and very dangerous with this guy, and he's trying to kill me. While I was screaming for dear life, every room I went to I felt trapped. I couldn't find anyone to help me. I then find myself running towards our front door, which we rarely used. I ran outside onto my street. I see street lights, neighbors' houses, but no cars and not a soul around. It was completely deserted. I ran to a neighbor's house screaming for help and no answer. I was paranoid and felt trapped because I knew the faceless killer was coming after me and that my life was in danger. Then, I'd wake up from my sleep. Here's the creepy part. I kid you not, every time I wake up from this nightmare or any other nightmare, I would wake up at exactly 3 a.m. If it's not 3 a.m., it would be 2.59 or 3.01. It was so common that if I was in my nightmare and I couldn't wake up fast enough, I'd tell myself in my dream, wake up now, wake up now. Then I'd wake up for real, 
and before I even opened my eyes, I would know it was 3 a.m. This is a common occurrence. I ended up training myself in my dream to do this. I've done some online research about this, and I found out that 3 a.m. marks when the spiritual realm and our realm have the thinnest veil at this time. It means that spirits can easily connect with us at this time. Ever since I moved out of state and into a new home, this nightmare stopped. I'm not exactly sure what the significance of this dream was or the reason behind it, or why I'd wake up from it at 3 a.m. every single time. I do want to know if anyone else out there has gone through the same experience I have. If so, please comment down in the comments below and let me know. When I was 23, I used to work as a housekeeper at a nursing home in a small town in Oregon, 15 miles east of the capital. One cold, rainy Sunday morning, after all the residents were done eating breakfast, I went to go mop the dining room of St. Veronica Hall, the long-term unit. As I was mopping, I felt someone walk past me, so I turned around. As I turned, I saw the back of a nun wearing a black habit and veil. I swear her garment swayed side to side in slow motion. She was walking toward the direction of St. Mary's Chapel. At first, I didn't think it was weird. It was a Catholic nursing home. As I stood there staring at her, I realized the chapel isn't used on Sundays. All the residents that attend Mass had already been taken to St. Anthony's, the church up the street, for morning Mass. That's when I slightly hollered at her. Can I help you with something? Before she turned, left, and entered the chapel. As I finished asking her if she needed help, she made a right turn into St. Agnes Hall, the abandoned unit. It's only used for storing old beds and broken furniture. No one hardly goes over there, except the maintenance guy. So I went up after her and let her know that there's nothing or no one there. When I got to the entrance of St. Agnes, I couldn't see her. The whole unit was dark. The lights were turned off and all I heard was silence. I got goosebumps and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I wasn't about to go into the dark unit to go looking for her in all these empty rooms. So I said to myself, they don't pay me enough for this and went back to mopping and dining the hall. As I began cleaning, I forgot about the whole incident until I started talking to one of the nurses who had been working there for a few years. When I told her what had happened, she began to tell me when the nursing home first opened, it was run by nuns. Before the remodel, the chapel used to be the back where St. Agnes Hall is now. Also, the nuns used to live on the upper of that unit, which is only accessible by stairs located through the door in the middle of St. Agnes Hall. Since then, I have asked if I can work in the St. Michelle Hall, a brand new short-term rehabilitation unit on the opposite side of St. Veronica and St. Agnes Hall. If any of you guys are believers in spirits or anything like that, I would definitely love to know in the chat. I have always been very fascinated by the paranormal, even more so since I had an encounter when I was a small child. I remember it as if it happened yesterday, although it has been over 20 years since the encounter. I was spending the night at my grandmother's house. I was able to spend the night in a guest room that was upstairs which was a real treat. I have slept there many times before, but this night was going to be very different. We always went to bed at 8pm. They had a small night light so if you had to get up in the middle of the night you wouldn't run into anything. I remember waking up from a deep sleep. There was a soft light that woke me up. I was facing the doorway and I saw a woman there in older clothing slowly gliding into the room that I was in. She had a weird aura around her, almost like she was on fire, but she seemed to be looking around. I quickly turned away from the door and closed my eyes and kept them shut. I was a little frightened, but kept my eyes shut and at some point, I did fall back asleep. I woke up early and slowly turned and she was not there. 
I heard my grandparents were up, so I got up and went downstairs. I have slept over there for years and have never seen her since or before. I did find out years later that there was a woman who lived there, and she caught on fire while tending to the wood stove and she died. She died a few rooms from where I slept. There was one other paranormal happening as of lately. This happened to me and my mother, who was also present. We heard it at the same exact time. I was in my grandparents' house and they are now in a nursing home and all the neighbors were not around. We live close to a bus route that gets very loud. It got quiet and we heard bells. It sounded like sleigh bells at first and they kept getting closer. My mom and I were both staring at each other and I stood up and went to the window. I was looking if I could possibly see a sleigh or something, but there was nothing out there. It was loud enough that it sounded like I was right outside the window, and then suddenly, it just stopped like there was nothing ever there at all. We heard the traffic. My dad asked what was wrong, and I asked if he heard the bells. He said no, and he was right by the window, but my mom said she had. We both remember the bells, but we rarely talk about it. What do you guys think? Anyone who comes from the UK is aware Dover Castle is infamously haunted by several ghosts. It was used as a bombing shelter in World War II and a hospital as well. It was also used by Dukes, I think, I can't remember as it's been years since I've been there. It's now open to the public and serves as a museum of sorts. The most famous ghost rumored to have dwelled there is the ghost of the headless drummer boy. I did hope to see the spirit. But the one I saw wasn't famous. I went there when I was seven years old with my dad, who is a strong believer, my stepmom, who is also a believer, and my brother, who is a big skeptic. This is where I saw my first spirit. We were doing a tour in the bomb shelters, and my dad, stepmom, and I saw an army man in World War II uniform at the end of the corridor. At first, we thought he might have just been part of the whole shebang, the show, if you will. Other people on the tour saw him, but not everyone really made a big deal about it. My brother didn't see it though. The army man then suddenly disappeared. The spirit wasn't scary or threatening, rather peaceful. I don't know why only half of the people on our tour saw him though. Truthfully, I have no clue. My guess is that only believers saw him, but that doesn't really make sense. I have been back twice and not seen a single ghost, but I have felt weird things and have heard things. I mentioned that story to my family and they just say, yeah, that was a weird day. And my brother is still adamant that it was a hologram and he wasn't looking properly. He's the type of skeptic who if he was thrown across the room by a man and then the man disappeared, he would say that he was just imagining it. Has anyone else ever experienced anything similar to this? I probably missed out on some important details of my story as it was so long ago, but I do thank you for reading it and sharing it on your show if it does make it that far. My grandpa's house is very old. It dates back to the 1860s. It was at one time a schoolhouse. He has told me stories about it before. A lot of kids went with them, but most of them died from a disease. I didn't know if he was trying to scare me or not. He also told me when my mom lived there, he used to hear and see stuff. He said that he could hear little children singing nursery rhymes in the backyard. When he looked to see what it was all about, he saw that there were some ghostly figures. I didn't believe him at first. This was all about the change one day though. One night, I was going to go and sleep at my grandfather's house. There are two bedrooms at my grandpa's house. I had to sleep with my grandpa and my sister slept with my grandma. That night, we were watching The Conjuring and we went upstairs at about 10.30 in the night. I went to bed fairly quickly. I would remember this night for the rest of my life though. I woke up sometime during the night. My best guess is around 1 in the morning, if I'm honest, I didn't see the clock. I looked around and saw nothing, so initially I went back to sleep. Oddly though, I woke up 5 minutes later. I had this weird feeling 
like something was watching me. I also heard something in the room, so I got my head out from under the blanket and looked. Right at the foot of my bed is the, what I can describe only as a ghost. I could not do anything. I could not move or look anywhere else. It was like I was frozen in fear and my attention was being ripped from me. The ghost seemingly just faded away. I did not know what to do after that, so I woke up my grandfather and told him. I didn't know if he'd believe me or not. Ever since this day, though, I still see and hear weird things in my grandfather's house. What do you guys think? Is this a haunted house? Is this some sort of demon? Or maybe is it something completely else? Please, in the comments down below, let's start a conversation about this. I just want to say, this story may be hard to believe, but please just hear me out. It's about this one time where I think I saw a ghost dog or some kind of four-legged shadow in my yard. One night, in the summer of 2016, I had taken my golden retriever outside so that he could use the bathroom. Normally, I would just let her out by herself despite not having a fully fenced off yard because she was taught not to leave the yard. This time, however, I decided to walk around with her because I still caught her in the street sometimes. Before we both walked out, I had put my 38 revolver in my shorts pocket, which I normally carried when going outside at night due to a surprise violent trespasser in the past. So, I was standing out in the yard, waiting for my dog to finish her business, and at some point, I lost track of where she was. I couldn't see or hear her in our big yard at night, so I decided to look for her until I saw her running down our long driveway towards the street. At that moment, I thought, oh crap, my dog is making a run for it again. Being that I was almost 100 feet away, I started to sprint after her, making my way to the driveway, then all the way down until I got to the street. When I got there, I looked around but I didn't see her anywhere. I started calling her name, while running back to where I was before, only to find her standing there. She was there the whole time right behind me. I was honestly so confused. I just saw a four-legged shadow running away. It definitely looked like a dog. To this day, I'm not sure if what I saw was real or if I was just seeing things. I think I saw a ghost dog, and perhaps it was my dog that passed away six years ago that we buried in the backyard. I told my uncle about it who has also seen a shadow dog in the yard at night, except he claims the shadow ran up to him and then faded away. I'm just glad that that wasn't the case for me. My story was told to me by a lady who used to cut my hair. As such, the following story will be told from her perspective. When I was a freshman in high school, I was dating an older dude who was a senior at the time. All my friends tended to be older as well, as they were juniors and seniors. Most of these people were all his friends and their girlfriends. I wasn't super close to them because I was only around due to dating their friend. One day, we all decided to have a camp out in the park. This was long before that side of town was built and so at this point in time, it was all woods instead of buildings. There was even a small shed used to hold tools and such for the maintenance people. At this camp out, there were four couples, including my boyfriend and I. We built a fire, and after we got bored with gossiping, we moved on to what all camp outs eventually move on to, telling scary stories. This was fun and all, but in the interest of curiosity and to spook ourselves some more, we decided to try to contact spirits with a Ouija board. One of the boys had brought it with him and we thought it would be a good idea. We started asking questions and after stupid pranks of people moving the planchette, one of the girls asked if anyone was here with us. The moment she asked this, her eyes rolled into the back of her head and turned a dark empty black and her hair turned gray and became patchy. It looked like wires were coming out of her scalp. She made a bone chilling moan before instantly turning back to her normal self. Upon returning to herself, she looked terrified and confused. The second this happened, I was like, nope, I'm out, and so I ran to the road and called for my mom to come pick me up. I explained everything that happened at the camp out, 
and she told me to break up with my boyfriend and to never talk to them again. The girl missed a few weeks of school, and when she came back, her hair was still patchy, and she went from a popular girl to looking dark and troubled. I stopped talking to my boyfriend and his friends for the remainder of high school. Thirty years later, I got on Facebook for the first time, and after a few weeks on there, one of the boys that was there that night sent me a friend request. I initially had forgotten about the events in the park from that night. I only remembered the boy from school and didn't add up the event to his friend request. Three days after adding him to my friends list, he messaged me. All it said was, I thought about writing a book about that night in the park for so long. I was instantly brought back to that night in the park and have relived the whole night every day since. I unfriended the guy and deleted my Facebook forever. I'm a person who is highly sensitive to the paranormal. A couple of months ago, I was experiencing some hard times, so I was in a homeless shelter in Bend, Oregon. At the shelter, there are some rooms with six women per room. One of the women at the shelter was disturbed and was practically possessed. We'd often hear her talking in three different voices at the same time. They claim she is a schizophrenic, but I know otherwise. On the bottom bunk under her was a lady trying to tell her story while I'm trying to talk to somebody else. She said she died and went to the lake of fire. I turned to her and said, you mean you went to hell? She replied with, no, I went to the lake of fire. I then repeated my question to the woman. She kept maintaining she went to the lake of fire and not hell. Another time, I was talking to this other young lady but we were both keeping an eye on the lake of fire lady. When we see this lady's facial demeanor start to change and her eyes go black. I mentioned we need to go to the cafeteria now to eat as an excuse to get away from this lady. The scary thing is we are assigned areas and so we eventually had to return to the same room. I went back early, quite tired. I pray a lot, so I began to pray before bed. I am very close to God and I feel that's probably one of the reasons I feel and sense things before they are going to happen. I had a feeling something around 3 in the morning was going to happen, and I was right. There was this awful, blood-curdling scream shaking the walls, and it was one of the longest screams I have ever heard. It went on for a solid couple minutes straight. I turned on my phone, and see it's 3.33 a.m., and I start recording and see orbs flying from the lady with the three voices. It's coming straight from her side of the room. The lights in the room were left on for the rest of the night and I was so glad when I finally got out of that room. I always pray for protection from the shield of armor and stay close to Jesus. I feel it's important, especially today, with what's roaming in the world these days. Thanks for listening to these allegedly true, creepy stories that just can't be explained. This is one of the longest ongoing series on this channel, and honestly, I'm very happy with it. There's nothing quite like a good old fashioned ghost story or bump in the night that just gives me goosebumps. If you enjoyed these stories, please hit that like button, as it helps me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss a new video as I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. Much love and thanks to my friend the Creepy Fox. He helped me out a ton today by reading story number two. If you enjoyed his voice, be sure to check out his channel, which you can find the link to do so in the description down below. I highly recommend his channel if you enjoy scary stories. He uploads them all the time and has a great voice and a great selection. If you guys are unaware, you can listen to all your favorite scary stories from the swamp on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Google Podcasts, and every other major podcasting site. If you can, go to iTunes and leave me a review. The more reviews I get, the better the podcast is supported by iTunes. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video. Oh, and by the way, if you made it to the very end of this video, let me know by commenting Green Apple in the comments down below. 
Let's see how many people we can confuse in the comments who didn't make it to the end. I appreciate you guys. See you soon.